Krishan like that. And, you know, I know she made music or whatever, but Krishan has a bunch of fans, baby, because they have been wearing my ass out. They got my Instagram live um, blocked for four days. So I could not be on Instagram live. So I'm going to say that, like, I know that I didn't say that I didn't know about her and her ringtone, but baby, Krishan has the fans, honey. Um, so I, I just want to do this live real quick. This is not going to be a bashing live and like trying to uh, expose people or whatever. Um, I do want to start this live first by saying that I would like to apologize to James Wright Chanel. Um, I want to apologize to him because before I went online on Friday and talked about what happened at the show, I did not ask James, could I say anything? I did tell him I was going to, um, but I wasn't like, James, is it cool or whatever. Um, I talked to James at that night. Well, I stayed at the venue until like 2 a.m., making sure that everybody was good and everybody was okay. Um, and then when I left, like James getting ready to go to the hospital, I called and talked to James every 30 minutes and um, we were FaceTiming. And when I saw him on FaceTime, it had gotten worse. Like his face had gotten worse from the time that I saw him at the venue versus once he was at the hospital. And I really got really like angry and frustrated and, and emotional and maybe, um, maybe like prematurely i was like oh i was like james i'm gonna call you back i'm gonna get on instagram and let everybody know what happens and i didn't ask him i told him that i was going to do it um so i do want to apologize to james for that i've spoken to james every day since this has happened um multiple times a day james has never said to me that he had a problem with me doing that but i do want to start that off with apologizing to james publicly if he does feel a way that I said something before he did. So I do want to say that. Um, then, you know, I've been getting dragged for Phil for like the past four or five days and ain't nobody said nothing, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I want to, I know in the comments, people were saying, they saw me be like, oh, this is my tour. Um, and people are like, this is not your tour. This is, you know, Tamar's tour. And you, you know, you, you, whatever, this isn't yours. And I just want to clarify what I mean when I say that this is my tour. This is something that um, Tamar has said publicly, that this is something her and I planned together, that we had pitched this tour to people, people didn't believe in it. So uh, her and I kind of thugged it out and made this thing happen ourselves. And I just want to clarify when I say that it's my tour, yes, it's Tamar's name on the ticket and, and she's singing, but it's parallel to that. It's my name on all the deals. I have had to, so this is not like a real tour. This is a bunch of one-offs we put together to create a tour because nobody believed in having an actual Love and War 10 year anniversary tour. So I have had to personally be in contact with every single venue that has been played and that is going to be played and negotiate with them and um, set dates and pick dates and, and talk to them and get the money that she wants and deserves and that she asked for has literally been all me. You know what I'm saying? So I have been the promoter in this situation. So just like any other promoter or, you know, people that put shows together, when they talk about things that they created, they'd be like, oh, this is my show. This she made personal. And that was very important because she didn't see me as just a patient my show this is my tour because if it wasn't for them just like if it wasn't for the artists and the artists and their talent there would not be a tour or a show so i wanted to clear that up for when i say that y'all saw me in the comments like oh this is my show like i can't get fired this is my show which is true i don't work for tamar i do not work for tamar that is a common misconception i am not a tamar employee i am not on anybody's payroll Okay, I work for myself. And so I just wanted to say that, um, or clear that up. I'm never, ever, ever going to try to take away from Tamar and her talent. Like I believed in this when nobody else did. I thought and still think that everybody deserves to experience the Love and War album in its entirety and how great it is and how great she sounds and how great she looks. 
So when I say this is my tour too, I'm not taking that away from her, but it, it does have to be acknowledged and it does have to be respected that just like if this tour, if it wasn't for Tamar, this tour wouldn't happen. Just like if, if it wasn't for me, this tour wouldn't have happened. And Tamar said that, like, you could, there's tweets of her saying like, you know, thank Mr. L. Davis for this whole, you know, 10 year anniversary thing. It wouldn't have been anything without him. And so I just want to say that to clarify when I have said in the comments, like, oh, you know, this is my show or whatever. Not trying to take anything away from her. Okay, so the next thing, uh, which is really what I wanted to talk about. Not going to be here long, I promise. What I really wanted to talk about is there has been a lot of people um, online and personally, like, well, not a lot of people, like, personally, but um, people that have access to me that have said that you should not have said anything. You should have let that remain private, let everybody handle it, um, you know, without everybody knowing what happened, you should have just not said anything. And what I'm going to say to that is, I will never ever in my life and still won't, and I'm not ever going to apologize for exposing an abuser. As somebody that has wit witnessed abuse and has wit witnessed friends get like within inches of death being in abusive relationships and in, in, in abusive situations, I will never apologize for calling out something or someone or anyone that I know for a fact, and it's not speculation, has been abusive. I feel that so many times people are abused and you know people are abused and or they end up dead or they end up in the hospital in a coma. You know, they get stabbed by a boyfriend or a jealous best friend or, you know, they get shot and they're fighting for their lives. And the first thing everybody says is, oh, my God, why didn't anybody say anything? I had no idea that was going on. Nobody told me that this abuse was going on. Oh, my God, you had me around these people and you never told me that they were abusive. I had no idea. And then everybody want to be at the funeral crying. Everybody want to be at the hospital bringing flowers and edible arrangements. But nobody spoke up about the abuse that they knew was happening. And so for me, again, as somebody that has seen abuse and in, in, in abuse um, behavior in relationships, and just to be honest, abuse is not just when you're with somebody intimately or you're in a relationship or whatever. Abuse is when somebody is like verbally, physically, mentally abusive. That is abuse. And for all the people that are saying that I should not have said anything and I should have been quiet, there are plenty of people that are dead in the ground right now today because people around other people that were being abused didn't say anything and they kept it quiet and they handled it privately. And then those people went on to abuse other people. Other people. And so I will never apologize forever, ever, ever, ever calling out an abusive person for attacking someone. And that's just that. And again, my apology is to James if James was not ready for that to be said or, you know, I didn't get you know, permission from him or running by him that I was going to say something. Well, I didn't ask him. I just told him, like, James, I'm going to call you right back. Because when I saw James' face again on FaceTime, I was like, oh, hell no. I'm like, I'm getting on Instagram right now. And that's what I did. But again, I did not... Um, make sure that was okay with James first. So I do just want to say that publicly that if I, James, dead ass, I, you know, I'll talk to you every single day, multiple times a day since this has happened. Um, I know you, you have not said to me that you are upset with me about that, but if you are, I do want to say publicly, I apologize to you for that, um, for saying something before you were ready for anybody to say anything. But again, I want to reiterate this. And I want to make this very clear for any and everyone that is in the comments or saying and, and they're worried about reputation and, and all this other stuff that to me 
still to this day doesn't matter when somebody is physically hurt and assaulted, I will not apologize ever for calling out an abuser. And I actually employ people to um, do the same. You know somebody's being abused or, or like, like you just, it's the craziest thing to me that people are like, you should have not told the truth about somebody being abusive. You should have kept that quiet. You should have kept that behind closed doors. And I just feel, especially in the African-American community, we do that so much. Everybody just always wants to say, no, don't, no, keep that in the house. Don't tell nobody. No, shh, kitchen, cable, kitchen table talk. And it's like, nah, dog, like people are being like hurt. And anybody that knows me, they know that I am like a big ass teddy bear. I have a mouth on me. Okay, right. But um, I'm a big ass teddy bear and I really, really care and I really, really love people. And it really, really, really upset me and made me angry when I saw James' face the way that I saw it on Friday. So um, again, I do regret, well, no, I don't regret. I do apologize if James is upset that I went online talking about it before he did. I do not apologize for calling out someone that has been consistently abusive, has abused somebody that I know. Now, James and I, excuse me, aren't like best friends. We're, you know, we're not like, uh, I don't want to make it seem like, oh my God, James and I talk every day, all day. And, you know, we do family dinner all the time and stuff. It's not that, but James is the person that I spend a lot of time with. Um, James and I have had our hiccups in the past where we, you know, we have butt heads a few times, but I would never want anything to happen to him and to see that to happen to him and to know when and how it happened to him infuriated me. And um, that is why I jumped online that day. So say this one last time, James, if you feel a way about me going online and talking about it on Friday before you got a chance to. I want to apologize to James for that. But I also want to make it very, 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 very clear. I will never in my life apologize for exposing an abu ex abuser. I will never apologize for telling the truth. And I actually would like that um, if more people would, would uh, I know you guys have been saying I've been getting death threats, people say they're going to beat me up. And that's a lot of times why people don't speak up when they know about people being in abusive behavior, uh, abusive relationships and abusive behavior, because they're scared of the backlash they'll get, just like I've been getting for, for, for this. But um, yeah, I just want to jump in and say that, like this, like I said, this is not a bash anybody thing. It has been a two days honey for sure um but i did just want to say that i am not going to be apologizing for not keeping this private i think that that is a huge problem especially in the african-american community when people know that people are harming other people and don't say anything that that's not cool and that's not okay and i'm never going to be that person and whatever uh repercussions come to me because of that that's on me you know what i'm saying but i know at the end of the night and at the end of the day i'm going to be able to say yo like you know that was wrong you know james james was assaulted and you spoke up about it and there's going to be nobody in this world that is going to make me feel bad about speaking out about abuse and i'm sure many of you guys know people that have been in abusive relationships abusive friendship, abusive, you know, workplace violence, like all this stuff and nobody ever says anything. And then, you know, a person that's being abused ends up committing suicide and everybody's like, oh, we had no idea that they were being abused. Hey Google, take a selfie. Are you having any fun? I want to get her a gift she'll actually use. Big brand yoga gear for great prices at Sierra. Something more personal. How oh, we had no idea that they were being abused. And it's like, yeah, because y'all shade people and shame people for speaking out against abusers. How does that work? Like, how does it become the, the person that's being abused 
and the person that cares about the abuse speaking out, how does it become their fault? And so I just wanted to say that if anybody thinks I'm going to apologize for speaking out about what happened on Friday, which, you know, eight days later, everybody has now come out and said was the truth. And I know people say, our, like, our stories have been changed and stories are different. Everybody's story is different. Every, everybody's experience was was different. So every, nobody's story is going to be the same. That never happens. Like, that's why there's so many different versions of the Bible. But, um, yeah, that, I just wanted to clear that up because I did not lie. Um, it happened, as it's been confirmed by other people outside of just me at this point. And um, I will not be issuing an apology for calling out somebody that is abusive and somebody that physically assaulted someone and somebody that chipped somebody's tooth and somebody that busted somebody's nose and somebody that busted somebody's lip open. I'm not going to apologize for calling that out. I'm not going to wait for that to happen to somebody else. And then everybody, then everybody want to go public like, well, you know, she beat up James at the concert eight years ago. And everybody like, well, why did nobody say nothing? Y'all, y'all, y'all continue to allow this to happen. Um, so that's that. Again, it's not a bash party. I, I'm never here to bash nobody or, or throw anybody under the bus, but I did want to say that it's been a lot of comments about that in particular. Um, so that is all that I wanted to say. Um, it's a very unfortunate situation. I no longer a part of the, the the tour that I put together. But it is fine. I still want everybody to go. I think it's a great show. I've worked my ass off. I have sacrificed a lot. Time, energy, money, connections. I have worked my ass off. And um, for anybody that thinks that I would try to sabotage something that I took on for free, okay? There was not a dollar or a dime up front. Um, I actually think at this point, everybody on this tour has made more money than me. But um, I, there's just no way that I would want to destroy that or not see that do well. So I just hope that this cloud and shadow that's over it at this point goes away soon. I know everybody's going to be like, well, you, why are you still talking about it? I told y'all, they then people got my Instagram live of, of what's it called? Disabled for three to four days. Let me tell you, Krishan's fans do not play. I like, when, when the Krishan fans started coming at me, I was like, what did I get myself into? Because I really, I wasn't, I really was not familiar. I was like, I, okay, I want to address it too. I never said I didn't know her. I didn't know that she did like real, like real people performance music. But I was like, oh, like this girl is a big deal. Like, the people are really, really, really into her. And, and they started threatening me and got my um, my Instagram live disabled. I said, oh, baby, I have spoke out against the wrong abuser. <laughs> but, um, you know, I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. I can sleep at night knowing that I, I, I feel good about what I did um, and how I said it. I just don't feel good if it affected James negatively because he didn't deserve any of that at all. And um, if my video added to his 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 distress, as dramatic as that sounds, but it's pretty distressful to get attacked for no reason, uh, I do want to apologize to James for that. So everybody, you know, it's the holiday season. I just want everybody to be like candy and just go fly above all the haters. Everybody just stay prayed up. Um, again, I hope this cloud over this amazing project that I co-created, which is the Love and War 10 Year Anniversary Tour, continues on and that it does well. And there's nothing else like this that happens um, when they, I, I think they're still continuing on the shows that I booked next month. But that's that. On that, everybody, I ain't trying to drag it out. And um, that's all that I came to say for the saints and for the people. Um, but if y'all can stop dragging me, y'all been dragging me since Friday, like, oh my God, y'all not tired. <laughs> y'all not tired of dragging me after telling the truth and speaking up for abusers, but, I mean, speaking up against abusers. But all right, that's it, everybody. Uh, everybody take care. And um, I'm going 
on vacation. I'm mentally already checked out, but mentally and physically checking out as of this. And everybody have a blessed holiday. Thank y'all for coming. Thank me for speaking.